Hey guys, welcome to Travel Feels. Today we're gonna look at some easy ways to make your footage and your films look more cinematic in Premiere Pro. Of course, to get the best results for your films, you need to shoot in a cinematic way to begin with. But there's a few tips and techniques that you can use to make your footage look more cinematic in post. We're gonna be doing all these things in Premiere Pro and they're all built-in things or free things that you can use to make your footage look more cinematic. These are super easy and they cost you nothing but time, so why not take advantage of some of these? Let's get started. And good to go. So first, you need to make sure your timeline is in 24 frames per second. This is the most cinematic look. And so anything you're filming real time, that means not slow motion, you wanna film in 24 frames per second also. And anything that you film slow motion, like 60 frames per second or 120, you wanna conform that to 24 frames per second. And how you do that is really easy. You would just go to your, your clip here, right click, modify, interpret footage, and then assume 23.976, that's 24 frames per second. So this would be with any clips that aren't filmed in 24 frames per second. Next, what we gotta do is color correct. And color correcting is super important. What you're trying to do is match your shots. So when you're going from one shot to the next, there isn't any crazy color shifts or differences in contrast, and they just look like they fit together. And how we're gonna do that is using scopes. Scopes are super important. They give you a scientific, accurate look at your colors and exposures. And so it's an objective way of getting the right colors and exposure for your clips. And if they don't pop up right away for you, you can choose them from the window, Lumetri scopes. And then you can right click and choose which scopes you wanna use. And I like to use vector scope for colors and waveform for exposure. And so what these are showing is the waveform shows exposure values from left to right of your image. So anything on the left side is shown here on the left side, anything on the right side is shown on the right side and it's showing from zero to 100. So zero is pure black. It means that there's no detail, it's underexposed, you're losing everything in there. And then 100 is pure white. It means it's overexposed and there's no more detail there. What you want is a nice range of values. You want your shadows to be just touching the zero, and then if there's anything bright like the sky, you would wanna go close to the 100 level for your highlights. So let's start from the beginning. Um, we're just gonna make sure we go to zero here and get a nice exposure. Color-wise, it looks pretty good. Next clip. And you can see this one is a bit blue and probably a little bit magenta. You can see it shifting towards the blue and a little bit towards the magenta. So we're just gonna take it the opposite direction of those colors to balance it out. And saturation wise, you can see that they match pretty well. And for saturation, the further away the values are from the middle, the more saturated your image is. So the further out they go, the more saturation. And if it's really close to the middle, it means that there's very little saturation in your shot. And then next clip, we're gonna go bring down the blacks, lift up the shadows a little bit to get better exposure here. Gonna bring up the highlights and whites. And our saturation matches pretty well with the last ones. <clears throat> and then we're just gonna try to copy and paste. All right, so we're done with color correcting. The next step is color grading. Color grading is probably one of the easiest ways to make your footage look more cinematic with just a few clicks. So don't miss this step. 
And how I color grade is I would add an adjustment layer. Sorry, it's being cut off a little bit. Adjustment layer, bring it over all of your footage. And this way now we can make a look that affects your whole timeline. And if you wanna change that look, all you have to do is change the Lumetri on the adjustment layer instead of going to every clip and changing it again. It saves you a lot of time and it's easy to make changes really fast. And what we're gonna do is go for a teal and orange look, a subtle version of it. We're gonna to go to the color wheels and we're gonna bring the shadows towards the blue teal area. And then we're gonna take the mid-tones to the yellow orange area. And then we're gonna take the highlights to blue teal just a little bit. And we can see that that's affecting all the footage. Let's see what that's doing. That's looking much better already. We're gonna take this a little bit further still. So that's looking much better. Also, what we can do is go to the HSL secondary and we can choose the skin tones and saturate them a little bit more so the skin tones pop a little bit better. And so we just choose the skin tone area. We can click this to see what's being selected right now. Okay, that didn't work very well. So we're just gonna add a little bit more to it. All right, that's looking much better. We're gonna denoise that a little bit and blur. We're gonna add a little bit of saturation to the mid-tones. And that just pops out the skin tones a little bit more. I think this is actually a little bit too saturated, so we're gonna take down the saturation. So everything else is a little bit more desaturated, but the skin tones stay a little bit more saturated. We can go to HSL and add a little bit more saturation to the mid-tones and desaturate and desaturate the rest. All right, so that's looking pretty good for the color grade. And next easy way to make this more cinematic or more filmic is to make this anamorphic crop, which basically just means having the, which is basically just a widescreen format. It has the black bars on top and bottom. And there's two ways of going about this. You can go to sequence settings. You can change the vertical to 817 and then just scale everything up. We're gonna copy and paste that. And that looks much more cinematic now. And another way to do this is to just grab a free PNG from the internet and add the black bars on top and bottom, which has its advantages. For example, on YouTube, you can't do end screen annotations. If you export it with this resolution, you just won't be able to add them on. So that's a bit of a pain, but this is the better way of doing it, but you can do the PNG way. So the color grade is done here. It's looking pretty good, nice and cinematic. You can see what it's doing. It looks much better with the color grade on it than without the color grade. And then the last thing we can do to make it more film-like is to add some grain. How I like to do this is using a grain video file. And what the video file does is it just emulates a film grain look. And there's all sorts of different ones. If you don't have one yourself, you can go to Gorilla Grain and get a free sample. Um, I'm gonna be showing you what it looks like. It's a little bit intense and it has a flicker, but for some things it can really work, especially if you want a little bit more of a old school film look. So how you use the grain is you bring it into your timeline here and we're just gonna scale it up so it covers all the footage. And then you would select blending mode overlay. And now it's on full power and it's affecting the footage and it just makes it a little bit more cinematic with that nice film grain. And I would just also take down the opacity quite a bit um, keep it a more subtle look. And it's a small change, but it makes a big difference in the end. And here's the before and after. So there you have it, some easy tips on making your footage look more cinematic in Premiere Pro. 
These are super easy techniques. And if you wanna learn more about color grading, I have a color grading teaching course that goes through my whole process. I talk about theory and how to use scopes and color correction, color grading. I talk about my workflow in Premiere Pro and After Effects and even DaVinci Resolve. And I also just go through a bunch of different examples and show you how to color grade your stuff. So if you wanna learn more about color grading, the link is down below. You can check out that course. I hope you guys were able to learn something. Maybe you wanna take bits and pieces of this little workflow that I showed you so that you'll be able to make your footage look a little bit more cinematic. That's it for today, guys. I hope you learned something. Enjoy the filmmaking process and go make some travel memories.